Imagine a world where every breath stings with awe, where the howl of a predator is closer than your own heartbeat. This was the reality for Neanderthals' ancient humans who fought to survive in a frozen, unforgiving land. Their story isn't just about survival, it's about resilience, ingenuity, and a spark of humanity that burned even in the darkest times. Today we're diving into their world, not as distant ancestors, but as a species who faced nature's wrath and left echoes of their lives in the bones and tools they left behind. Stay with me, because this tale of struggle and strength will change how you see humanity itself. Before we weave this tale, let's ground ourselves in what we know. Neanderthals or Homo neanderthalensis were a distinct species of ancient humans emerging around 130,000 years ago. They lived across Eurasia from the Atlantic to the Altai Mountains in a brutal ice age world of frozen steppes and scarce resources. Built for survival, they had stocky, powerful bodies, about five foot five, 150, 175 pounds, with pale skin, thick hair, and large brains suited for physical control and spatial awareness. They mastered firecrafted stone and bone tools, built shelters from mammoth bones and hides, and even buried their dead, hinting at early consciousness. Their lives revolved around hunting massive animals like mammoths and woolly rhinos using close-range spears with no room for error. Food was scarce and preservation was nearly impossible, so they ate fresh kills and reused every part of the animal. Caves and temporary shelters offered minimal protection from cold predators and disease. Injuries were common, yet evidence shows they cared for the wounded, suggesting compassion. Cannibalism occurred in desperate times, not as ritual, but for survival. Around 45,000 years ago, Homo sapiens arrived in Europe, leading to limited interbreeding. Modern humans carry 1-2% Neanderthal DNA. However, Neanderthals began disappearing around 40,000 years ago, with their last traces in Gibraltar around 37,000 years ago. Their extinction likely stemmed from a mix of low population, 50,000, 70,000 globally climate shifts, and competition with more adaptable Homo sapiens. Their legacy endures in our genes and the artifacts they left behind. Picture a landscape of endless gray stone cliffs dusted with snow winds that bite through even the thickest hides. This was Europe one in a hundred thousand years ago, a place where the sun barely warmed the earth and night swallowed the day too soon. In this world lived Kael, a Neanderthal man of 25 winters, his body broad and scarred, his eyes sharp against the dim light. Kael's people, a band of 20 called a limestone cave, home its walls blackened by generations of fires. Life here was a rhythm of survival hunt, eat, endure, repeat. Kael's body told the story of his world. Short and muscular, his frame was built to conserve heat, his barrel-shaped chest heaving with each icy breath. His nose wide and prominent warmed the air before it reached his lungs. His brain larger than yours or mine wasn't wired for philosophy, but for instinct, spotting a deer's tracks in snow, sensing a wolf's scent on the wind. Neanderthals like Kale weren't smarter or dumber than us. They were different, their minds tuned to a world where hesitation meant death. Their days began before dawn. Kael and his brother Tor checked their spears, wooden shafts tipped with flint, each stone chipped to a lethal edge. Flint was their lifeline as precious as water. A single flake could become a knife, a scraper, or the difference between eating and starving. Today, they'd hunt a bison, its massive bulk promising meat fat and hides. But the hunt was no game. One wrong move and a horn could rip through flesh. Kael had seen it happen, his father crushed under a mammoth's foot, his screams fading into the snow. Neanderthals' physical adaptations fascinate me because they show how deeply environment shapes life. Their thick bones and high creatine levels, natural muscle boosters weren't just quirks. They were evolution's answer to a world of heavy lifting and brutal cold. Compare that to us molded by milder climates and technology. It makes me wonder, what are we losing as our lives get softer? Their strength wasn't just physical, it was a mindset of endurance. In a way, their bodies challenge us to rethink resilience. How much could we endure if pushed to the edge?
Back to Kale. The hunt began at midday, the band moving silently across the steppe. They tracked the bison herd for days, their stomachs growling. Tor led his gestures sharp. Neanderthals didn't need complex words, just signals honed by years together. Kyle flanked left his spear heavy but steady. The plan was simple, drive the beast into a ravine where the others waited, simple but never safe. As they closed in the bison, a ton of muscle and fury sensed danger. It charged hooves, shaking the ground. Kale's heart pounded, but he held his ground, shouting to distract it. Tor struck first his spear, grazing the beast's flank. The bison wheeled and Kale lunged, driving his spear into its side. Blood sprayed hot against the cold air. The animal staggered, then fell its breath, steaming in the frost. Dragging the carcass back took hours, every step a battle against exhaustion. At the cave, the band descended, knives flashing bones cracked for marrow hides peeled for warmth. Nothing was wasted. Sinews became cords, bones became tools. Even the blood was boiled with scraps for broth. Kale watched his sister Lyra stitch the hide into a cloak, her fingers nimble despite the cold. This was their life, every kill a victory, every day, fight to see the next. This scene sticks with me because it's more than a hunt, it's as a mirror. Neanderthals didn't hunt for sport or glory, they hunted to live. Every spear thrust was a choice kill and or die. It reminds me of moments in our lives when we face our own bison challenges that demand everything we've got. Maybe it's a job loss, a health crisis, or a dream that feels impossible. Their hunts teach us that survival isn't about being the strongest. It's about being relentless, working together and using what you have. How often do we give up when we could push through? Kale's cave was no sanctuary. Damp walls bred mold smoke, stung their eyes, and the cold seeped through every crack. When game grew scarce, they built shelters. Mammoth bones driven into the earth, draped with hides anchored by stones. These half-domed tents were crude but vital, letting them follow herds across the tundra. Inside, a fire burned its light, dancing on faces worn by hunger. Dry grass lined the floor, a thin barrier against the frozen ground. Life wasn't just cold, it was precarious. Predators prowled hyenas that could crush bone bears, that could slaughter a group in minutes. Disease festered in cramped spaces. A cut could turn septic, a cough could kill. Kael's cousin Mara limped from a fall that never healed, yet she worked scraping hides with a flint blade. The band cared for her, sharing meat when she couldn't hunt. This wasn't charity, it was survival. Every member mattered. But survival had a dark side. When hunger gripped them, when blizzards trapped them, some turned to the unthinkable. Archaeologists have found Neanderthal bones with cut marks, cracked femurs, burned fragments. Cannibalism wasn't ritual, it was desperation. Kale's band never spoke of it, but the elders' eyes held stories of winters when the dead fed the living. It's chilling, but it forces us to ask what would we do to survive? This reminds me of a modern echo, the Donner Party, a group of 19th century pioneers stranded in the Sierra Nevada. Like Neanderthals, they faced starvation in a frozen wilderness. When supplies ran out, some resorted to eating the dead. It's easy to judge, but both stories reveal a raw truth survival strips us to our core. The Donner Party's choices, like those of KL's people, weren't about morality, they were about enduring one more day. It makes me think about the thin line between civilization and instinct, even today. The wind howled across the frozen plain. Gray clouds stretched low over the earth, pressing down like a warning. Kyle crouched low behind a ridge of ice, his breath shallow controlled. Beside him tore. His younger brother clutched a flint-tipped spear, eyes wide not with fear but focus. They had tracked the beast for hours. A head half shrouded in swirling snow stood the bison, massive, silent. Steam rose from its nostrils in thick rhythmic bursts. Every breath it took was a chance for them to move, every blink an invitation. Kael motioned with his fingers two steps left, then wait. Their tribe had no need for words in moments like this. Movement spoke, silence guided. From the other side of the slope, Joran and Laka crept into position, forming the final arc. The trap was nearly set. Kael could feel the weight of his spear. 
Not just the wood and stone, but the memory of hunts gone wrong. The father they lost, the ribs he cracked in a fall last winter. He was strong, but strength didn't guarantee life. Precision did. Timing did. Trust did. The bison shifted, sensing something, but not enough. Tor's hand twitched. Kale gave the nod. The tribe lunged as one. Snow exploded beneath their feet. The bison turned bellowed hooves, thundering against the frozen earth. Tor struck first his spear, skidding along the beast's side. Kale followed, aiming low and deep. His weapon hit home. The bison reared, flailing, but it was already falling. Silence returned, broken only by the sound of breath and wind. The hunt was over. But Kyle didn't rise right away. He knelt beside the fallen animal, pressed his hand to the thick fur, and whispered something only the wind could carry. Not a prayer, not a thank you, just a moment. A recognition that in the world they lived in life was not taken lightly. Every kill meant survival for the old, the sick, the children. And every breath they had was borrowed from the creatures that had lost theirs.